Yep. This is where it gets a bit delicate. I've got to get to that sort of close if I can. Yeah, there we are. Let's try a trial separation, shall we? Pull the cans apart and oh, look at that. Held up by a magnetic field. It wobbles. Woo! Fantastic. What about the top of the pyramid? Sometimes it collapses. Well, usually it does. So, so have a go. Oh, no, it's there. But will it come apart when I pull the cans away? Look at that. Wow. Fantastic. It's delicate now. It's delicate. So the subject is coins, in which you use coins for things other than spending them. Well, there are an awful lot of coin tricks around, books of them, and coin magic around, puzzles around. But I like coins just as, um, as toys, really. So if we can find a few toy, toy uses for, for coins, see what you can come up with. Here are some examples of them. This is something I picked up, I think, it was a friend of mine found it in a casino. It's a really heavy, typical token you have in a, in a casino. But actually, on this end, it says your turn, or something like that, your turn to, to pay the meal. You can put it on the table and it'll spin. Why does it spin? Because there's a tiny, tiny little bubble, so small you can't see it, in the middle of the printed bit there. So it allows you to spin around, and whoever it points to has to buy the next round of drinks. Nice one, that. I like that. And then there's another spinner here, which is a brilliant one. This is a, made by American craftsmen. They make superb stuff. It's a wooden, quite a nice wooden disc with some patterns on one side and something else on the other side, but a little one cent piece, or it could be a penny, knocked into the middle. I don't know whether it's glued or not, but it's a superb fulcrum for the top because it spins beautifully all on the little edge of the coin. Wonderful, either way up too. I do like the idea of it working so well. It's a nice concept, but it actually works extremely well. That's the old Benham wheel effect, isn't it? So a superb idea of using coins to assist in making toys. Why not? There's a bit of naughtiness here where a friend of mine who's uh, very much into metal puzzle making decided to make a little punch when he found the new European coins, which a few years ago had this centerpiece. So he forced the punch with a punch, forced the centre bit out of it like that. So you can then spin either one like that and that one like that, or you can put them back in again with a bit of a hammer and you can actually restore the coin to what it was beforehand. And quite a few countries are now producing these double metal coins, so I think that'll probably grow, but I think there's other things one could probably do with it. But it's a good start anyway. Take the middle out and then see where, you, see where it leads to. This is a nice little optical trick. It's an old one I've known for many years. It's a funny pattern. I think it was invented in Victorian time, this one. And when you shake it vertically like this in little tight circles, it looks as though there's a little grey coin in the middle. Well, to my mind it looks like that. Does it look like to you? The trouble is, when you stop shaking it, the coin disappears, or does it? Oh, no, it's manifested itself into a real coin. <laughs> Fairly easy to do, but you can stop the idea. So, coins can be used for tricks as well. And here's another magic trick which I came across many years ago, about the only one I can do, using a coin that's got a hole in it, preferably. It is, I think Chinese coins still have that. All you do is you put a piece of elastic in, through the hole, pull it tight, and then with a bit of effort and mental hypnotism, make the coin go uphill, defying gravity. Astonishing. How does that work? Well, I think you work it out if you play around with a coin and elastic bands and things. But it's a nice one to show what else can be done with coins other than just spending them. <laughs> it goes all the way up to the top too. Astonishing. Another little trick you can do with a coin, which is one of my favorite toys, I think, is called a wobbler. It requires two discs, and you put them in, you only need to make a small slit, and you'd probably best use coins which are now no longer legal tender. Make a small slot, push them in like that, and then it wobbles across the table. Paul Schatz, I think, discovered this about 100 years ago almost. It wobbles right across the table. And I suppose with a metal one, you'd have something like this, but not, not actual rings, but proper, proper tuppenny pieces or coins anyway. You make a little slit in it, and then you'll find that if you join them together, They'll wobble across the table in a delightful way, which I like very much as the old wobbler. So another thing to do with coins. <laughs> I think my favourite trick to do with coins is this slot here, which is an astonishing bar bet. In a bar bet, you've got to bet your friends that you can achieve something, and if they 
if you lose the bet, you buy them a drink, and if you win the bet, they buy you the drink. So there's a lot of, well, five penny pieces, uh, it's a British coin, very small, filling up. About 26 of them are in a tiny little shot glass jar. Now, if I empty them in my hand like that and fill that up with the water up to the top level, how many of these coins can I get back in again? Well, you can see they occupy pretty well most of the space there, except they don't, as you'll now see. I'll fill it up with water, or you can put whiskey in if you want, to make it really expensive, up to the top, just about the top, and start putting the coins in, one by one by one. See how many we can get in. And see how many whiskies you can put. If I haven't got a steady enough hand, and my hand's beginning to feel a little unsteady, I can cheat slightly by using tweezers. And that gets them a little bit under the water and then release, and that reduces the shock of the coins falling into the liquid. It's quite astonishing how many will fall in. Can you see what's going on? The first thing to notice or to remember is that when the coins were sitting in the empty glass, there was a lot of air gap around them, not a space, and into those spaces go all the molecules of water. So that takes up some of the explanation. But the other thing is that when you've got the thing almost full, you'll find that the top of the glass starts bulging. It's called a meniscus. Water tension holds the water in place like a skin in a very small tube. It would actually form a hemispherical bubble, like a balloon almost, but this one here won't do it. It'll just do a slight bulge at the top. And it's quite surprising how many coins... Oh, no, no, I think, I think I'll let myself go on that one because you didn't notice it, did you? A little more slowly. Ooh. I think I'm cheating now. Oh, I'm going to do two. Oh, no, that's it. That's as many as I can get. If I'm really careful with this, I have got almost 26 coins in there. That would bring me a lot of beer. But anyway, something you can do yourself. Just a little shot glass, lots of coins, water, a steady hand is the most important thing, and have a bar bet with your friends and see how many free drinks you can get this summer.